Welcome to the Balanced Ambition Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Southam. Here, we delve into candid conversations with entrepreneurs, exploring both their business journey and their secrets to maintaining mental well-being. As we navigate the balance of ambition and inner peace, I hope you find insights, inspiration and invaluable takeaways in every episode. Thank you for joining us. Anna, hello. Welcome to the show. I want to start just by asking you, tell me a bit about you. Tell me about your background. So, uh, uh, Matt, thank you very much. And, and thank you for today. Thank Pleasure. you for having me. Um, I am I'm a, I'm an absolute uh, um, confessed member of the travel industry. I don't think I could ever be doing anything differently. I, um, I, I'm, I started as a marketeer, really. I worked a number of years in, uh, um, I moved to the UK, I went to college here, I literally um, started as a marketeer, understanding the brands, the good old days, then, you know, uh, the good old days were Stelios still at, at college, and then um, we started uh, the dot-com uh, revolution uh, in the 90s, and uh from hotels, one day I wake up and I said, do you know what? I want to do attractions. I've done I've done so many hotels for so long. Hilton and and, and it was great. It was a great way to to uh, um, get into the industry. Um, always on sales and marketing and operations. And uh, and um, I decided to do a bit of tour operations as well. I'm just going to go to the dark side and uh, see how those, those <laughs> I know the hotels call it, you're going to the dark side and uh, um, to see how those bookings take place, how these people get to make the decisions and how the other services were, were involved, right? I suppose as just the bed, all the food in the bed. And then um, uh, I spent a few years in tour operators as when I started making itineraries and my hunger for getting to know places and driving. And, and uh, it was really the first time that I felt I feel like a traveler. I need to organize an itinerary that makes people happy. I then work for American Express, which I think it was fantastic. It's a, it's a, it's a concierge company called Ten UK that was providing uh, services. And I remember my interview on that, uh, the first time in that company, and they told me, can you build an itinerary for the players? And I was like, okay. You need to understand what they like, what they feel, where they want to go. Something for the parents, something for for the the kids. And that's just when I realized that travel wasn't about the travel people; it was about the consumer and what it was doing. And then I went. I realized that that the for me when I travel, uh, I, I'm a big, big traveler. It's on the name, right? Um, I was traveling. The part that was more exciting is what I'm going to wake up. I'm going to do next day. So I um. I realized, I, I find out that the first skyscraper and uh, the first viewing platform in London was, was you know, all for grabbing. And I just really wrote to them and I, w- I want to work for the Shard. I think it was one of the most beautiful projects I've ever been involved. As uh, we used to say, I started in floor 28. Everybody had a floor. Which floor did you start? I was starting 32. Oh, I said a year later. And then... Um, um, <laughs> I, I I loved it. I was there for, for a number of years, launched the product, got engaged in, in what it was, the, the brand, the hotel, how we get all these brands to work and, and, and come across to the consumer as a destination. Uh, very much engaged in, 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 the, in, the, in the destination London Bridge itself, Borough Market. What is now an incredible thing around the world was absolutely no one was walking around there on a Saturday, I can tell you that. Um, and then from there, I, I realized that that people wanted more out of their time. It was, it was brands like Secret Cinema, The War of the Worlds, uh, um, Immersion started, you know, how we combine tech to, to live up our senses, how we make every minute a memory. How can bi-dimensional won't do it anymore? How, me listening, me looking and somebody is talking at me, I want to be part of that story. Listen to the story is not enough. So I, I um, started the consulting. I worked for Big Bus as well. I, I thought, you know, understanding destinations, cities. Uh, and then immersion became my, my obsession, really. How we make sure that people become the characters of their own story. And that's up to here. Mm. Very long answer for a very short question, isn't it? <laughs> no, I mean, that, that, that's, I mean, what you're saying there, I mean, that, that almost takes you a little bit back to your marketing days of, you know, making people the, the story, making people the hero, because that is often uh, part of marketing. 
you know, j joining it together. So actually, I can see there's some influence there. So growing up, did you travel much growing up? Where did you get the, the travel bug? Where did it all start? Do you know what? I was born in a, in a traveling family. Apparently, my mom was cleaning the closets when my brother was four years old. She was cleaning the closet and my brother said, are we going again? Traveling, traveling, <laughs> and she's like, "No, darling, we're just cleaning the closet." So I, I um, I was born in a family that that uh, uh, I grew up in France, and we moved from city to city because um, um my father job, and uh, we we live in the south, and then we move to another city, and we move to another city, and my mom will will not care the fact that we we had no much budget for it. She will put a soul in the back of the car and she will, you know, stock the, the car with food. Here we go, let's... And I remember waking up and say, Mom, are we in the mountains or are we going to the beach? <laughs> South of France, um, ice cream places. Uh, and I, I started to understand what an experience was, was, you know, looking at those pictures and uh, having the biggest ice cream in town when I was five. And I was always into spies, though. Being able, Mum, remember, we need to be in a city when they release the new James Bond, any James Bond. And I was like, <laughs> I would just love James Bond. And then uh, um, uh, just eating in different places. This is Italy. This is, um, um, you know, uh, reheating food on, on the borders of uh, something you have in Europe. And very much in, in those times in France was those camping where families could stop and just sit down and have an absolute beautiful picnic overlooking vineyards and not paying much for it. So, yes, every single summer we will go, whether it was Austria or whether it was. And then coming back to the U.S., I've got a lot of family in the U.S., so visiting. So my mom was an absolute traveler. When I was 12 was the first time she said, now you have traveled enough with your family. You're going to travel on your own. <laughs> so I went to camp. When you were 12. <laughs> yes. So she sent me to, to Houston to, to ride horses and make friends and speak other languages and do other things. So I, I, I was always very, very proud to be. She said, you need to go on there and, and make new friends. And, and the, then the camp became the summer thing. You know, I was looking forward to what it's going to be this year. Yeah. Are we going to the mountains? Am I, am I going to, to Cincinnati? Am I going to... It was always going to summer camp somewhere in, um, in the U.S. and explore a bit with the family. And then the, the same, you know, in, in France, it was very... Uh, cycling was something that we loved that we used to go on cycling on the summers and uh, so I, I I really my mom was a chef she always cook so food uh, I remember having my first glass of wine at six years old my dad said you need to tell me what you think <laughs> and I was like I think I think it'll go well with pasta <laughs> so it's um <laughs> you know in France in France alcohol is something that was made for the food and uh, in Spain, you you mm. the, you eat and you drink. So I was I was literally I grew up in a family that wanted to uh, drink, eat, sit down around a table, cook, talk about it, talk about it all the time, um, and uh, read a lot of spying books. My father was into spying and and uh, <gasps> civil. Uh, Spanish Civil War and World War II. Let's talk about World War II. That's the fa that was the family phone. Let's do a, a World War II picnic um, and take arrive into a castle and see how many wars and museums. So it was, I think that built up my, my hangout of doing things. And um, I think the decisive moment was uh, in April 2019. I was in, in, um, in uh, uh, Morocco for... Um, Marrakesh for about four days and we did that day out with the, with the guide and the guy was talking and um, they take you to that tree where the, the goats are in, in the tree, they are at the top of the tree yeah. and I, I didn't want to see the goat, I want to go in the tree and get the goat and that's what I did <laughs> I got the goat and the guy was like, you don't supposed to, and the guy just took and put the goat in my arms and, and when I felt that warm animal in my body and I was there I just felt it was just different. I just felt that's what immersion is all about. In for in that moment, me and the goat were one and all. <laughs> so sorry, I know the story of the goat is very cheesy, but I do I do love goat. That, no. that story. I just realized in that moment that people do not want to see the the they want to feed the animals, they want to eat, they want to understand. On the way back, we stop in that cooperative for for women. Uh, um, uh, fleeing domestic abuse 
and they make their own shampoo and you buy the, the beautiful products that they, you know they are they are not tourist traps and you spend time with those women and you understand their lives. And that's where I thought, yes, what people meant to be with a local think is to do to be with a local i think is to get to know people to get to know a destination with whatever it is that with the warmth of a goat and the miseries of a society that you know so i thought that's what i want to do i want to create unique experiences that make people remember the the goat moment <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, I, I can see it too. I mean, there's a couple of bits to unpick there. There was a couple of interesting bits you said. I mean, obviously, you've been working in the UK now. And do you see some differences in our culture for, for growing up? So, I mean, you, you touched on alcohol being for, um, you know, food, whereas in the UK, often there is a, a drinking culture separate to that. But then also, you said about going to summer camps and things like that. And that's very big in America. Children will go away from their families. But here in the UK, we tend to holiday with our children. Don't don't we? Do you, do you feel there's a, there's a difference in culture here? Very massive. It's uh, it's um, I, I couldn't even believe it until I literally put all my suitcases on on the ferry and across the channel via Portsmouth. Um, I think it's it's a total different understanding of of the relationship between the parents and the children. Um, back I think uh, in France we start because we, there is something called classe de neige, which is called school of snow. And um, when you are on your second year of, of uh, primary, you go away from your parents for a month to ski is a subject. Ski is a subject at school. You need to pass it. Mm -hmm. And you go with all your school and you go away. And uh, and you know what? It builds all sorts of sense of responsibility. You get your own money. You're only 10. You get your own money. You, you I was very excited that I was for the first time I could decide every morning what I'm, I'm supposed to wear and don't have to wear the same thing and making my own decisions and uh, and um, you have to at the end of the the camp you have to put a play together uh, of course I have to be Aneta from Abba <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> you know, as, as you do right and that, as you do yeah as you do exactly and that um, that sense of of freedom, of independence, of uh, going out there and doing doing your thing. Of course, you you supervise and um, and um, you are you are with your colleagues at school. But then it was it was um, that culture of of going away and um, and spending, discovering things, tasting new things, walking around, uh, being in 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 small villages, being in. Uh, I remember being given a little bit of money and sent to the shops to buy something that I like it to wear. Um, Mum, are we going to do this? I mean, it was, and uh, I don't think we were very different. That 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 loads of the family similar to us. It was, it's something that's very, very insert into the into the culture, and and um, mm. it, it goes with eating and drinking and complain about the government in any form of way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think if every yeah. French person is a little politician and and have have to choose a political party <laughs> uh, since they are. Are you five? Just choose your politician. Um, choose, are you are you a socialist? Are you six? Um, it's a, it's a, it's very into the the skin of what we do. Plus, my my mom's from Venezuela, so we always had that that very Latino. Um, yeah. But you know, for for a um, for a, a woman that that grew up in in such a, a conservative environment, she wanted us to to be out there because it was the same. My brother would say, "Let's let's just go summer camp, or let's spend the summer in in the south." Uh, it was um it was an a, an entity called Comité d'accueil, um which would facilitate families to to go away. So my parents would probably drop us uh, two months in in a chalet with our grandma, and they will go and travel themselves and have time on their own as a couple, and we will just go around in Austria, you know, swimming and doing things with friends and. And it was it was it was a great way to be independent, to to just mm. knowing what we wanted, do what we wanted, go to places, um, be in control of the temptations. Right? It was not yeah. point for us to to we we could have done it any time. We just were empowered to do it whenever we wanted to. So, giving I think giving that freedom give you the responsibility to use it in a good way. Yeah. And and how have you taken some of those influences into what it is you do now and planning experiences for for other people? 
Do you know what? Absolutely. I um when I when I finished college, then I worked for a few years at Hilton, and then I decide as you do. My 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 father was a PhD, so he said uh, uh, for him uh, uh, just one degree is almost like you haven't ever even gone to school. So uh, he said, "What happened with your masters? It's, it's, if you get too much into into work, she's not going to be no master." So straight away, two years later, I went into it, and I um um. Literally, when I finished, I found myself with a lot of time that I was, because I, I didn't stop working, I was working and doing the master at the same time. So I was literally, my God, what am I going to do with so many hours? So I decided to uh, get a degree in, in enology. So I was into wine. I was like, if I'm going to go to a place to drink, I might just do it in some positive way. So I, I loved it. I loved it. I went to the Wine and Spirit School uh, in London, which was amazing with Mr. College. Every evening, you were making notes. It's crispy. Mm. It's got, and you learn about the grapes and you start. And then when you learn about the grapes, you want to match them with the right food. Obviously, I cook, I bake. I'm a baker. I bake anything. Bake cookies. Bake. You, you give it to me, I bake. I, it's the most beautiful thing to do is bake. Um, so baking, cooking, eating, I thought, mm. I, I literally started to think about what are all the things that would like. I started, the company started because we were in lockdown. All of a sudden, we come back. I, I, was, I was actually in Dubai on holiday. I come back and... Uh, I realized that I haven't got a job. All my, my clients have asked me to, to, they're going to shut down. It's, it's nothing going around. And I thought, I'm just going to, if, if the first thing I can do is get the locals, the Brits to fall in love again of their own backyards, the beautiful, because mm -hmm. I've seen the, the, you know, in these 30 years I've been living in, in, in London, I've seen the incredible transformation of this city where you, literally walk into a supermarket and the choices was cheddar or, or cheddar or or mature cheddar. Um, yeah. yeah. You now have got corridors of cheeses. But not just that. It's about people wanting to mix them and try them. And uh, when the most exciting thing was a burger at the cafe, now you have uh, um, all sorts of corners and street food. And the burger has become vegetables and jalapenos and, and that. It went from being a burger to being the most incredible gastronomical street experience. And uh, the old great, and now you, you talk about, I love Paris and I love uh, Brussels and I love New York, but I don't see there is a city in the world with a m much more colorful uh, uh, elements of food and drink and people because what happened is all these incredible human beings that live in London brought their flavors and their countries before those flavors were mm. there but the kind of I call it they were ghetto size they were you needed to go to that area to eat that and that area now you found that this guy in the top of Oxford Street in the in a street mall make that gorgeous thing and the survey and uh, and I thought I want to I I want to make sure that, that there is something that the Brits say, I'm going to stay in London and I'm going to spend a few days. I'm going to travel from Birmingham. I'm going to travel from Manchester to London and God knows, maybe got Manchester from London. And uh, instead of going to Spain or Italy, or there is beautiful things in here. If we manage to do that, then we're into something. And that's what we, yeah. that's what we did. So to, to, talk me through that. Cause yeah, I mean, I, I don't visit London very often. I'm, I'm not actually that far away, but actually it is a real cultural hub. There's, there's so many different influences within in the city and there's some beautiful architecture as well. So actually we can compete with any of the other cities around Europe or, or the U S but I, I think a lot of the time we, we talk it down and, and maybe th that goes back to my earlier question about our culture and things like that. Maybe we don't appreciate actually what's on our doorstep so, so, so talk, talk to me more about how why you why you love London and some of the best things people should try. I have, I, I think one of the things was um, I hear and I experience it myself. Not, I always said, not every hand do have to involve a man naked. <laughs> there is all sorts of ways that I enjoy. And one of the things I find out was when family was visiting. Or where a friend of mine that she says, Anna, can you organize something for me? Yes, I know I'm getting married, but I don't 
my idea of just getting drunk and what can we not do a fantastic day out that doesn't involve the normal things. <clears throat> and I realized that if you wanted to go out there and found that, it was it was either tourist expensive tourist traps, ticking boxes, or either yeah. or either um, um, things that involve an enormous amount of just alcohol or just clubbing or uh, it, it, that level of inclusion of people want to just, why can I just not spend a day having a glass of champagne in a museum? Uh, and then don't, it was nothing like that out there. Or uh, the closest to fun was a, a lesson of pottery or, or let's make some some gloves or let's, let's, I said, that's a bit bi-dimensional. Uh, why don't we create days that people feel that we show them? So that that was what we first set up to do. I think is the consequence. And I, and I look back, you remember I told you at the beginning of, of our chat that I work at Tour Operators. I think because mm. back in the good old days of 2019, the stats uh, said that London was just London had experienced, I think it was 41 million visitors, overseas visitors. The... Mm. The actual travel sector has never been, previous to COVID, under the actual necessity to innovate or to change. Or, do you know what? We've been selling Bath, Windsor and Stonehenge for 25 years. Why change it? It sells, right? Yeah. It's um, Coswolds. It sells, right? Let's take them to Coswolds over and over again. The thing is, there are a number of of affluent travelers. The first ones were the Brits. They're not going to go to Bath, Windsor, Stonehenge. They want to discover the incredible alleyways of London. They want to, and that was even previous. The, the you know, it was we're talking about the early infancy days of TikTok. Because remember, the the, yeah. the mother the the mother of TikTok is called COVID and the QR code. <laughs> Those were the father is the QR code and the mother was COVID, and uh, and yeah. COVID and then COVID was born. So now those days you can find all those incredible secrets of itineraries in TikTok and it's amazing and and people spend hours trying to find out. So. I, I love them. It's one one of the things the algorithm shows me them because they are just so interesting. The exactly. the history and the tour guides of London showing you these hidden areas that have been just around the corner from where I was, you know, last month. The, those never incredible realized. secrets just next to you. And you know what? I love the person that named that, that social media, I call it TikTok, because it was about time. TikTok, TikTok. It's yeah. short, it's sweet, it engages you, and he he, he, um, it's so short that is enough to entertain you, not so long, not enough to bore you or try yeah. to educate yeah. you. Some... Some Brits, I think, felt uh, uh, patronized by either being uh, educated by a guide. In 1957, the gene craze in London, I don't want to go there. I want to go to five pubs. I want to understand what happened. And some of those pubs have prisons downstairs. They still, the viaduct has a full prison on the cellar. You have to literally open the prison to change the barrels. Um, and people were waiting in that, in that cellar to be executed next to the Old Bailey. Um, and they made they make infusions of, of, of gene, and you can spend the whole afternoon trying those. So why not go out there? I think it was a little bit of a, um, um, I wouldn't call it, you know, when you just, it's happening, they come, the international travelers come, there is absolutely no necessity for us to 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 create anything new. So I think every single element that was needed for us to create was given. We had guides with incredible amount of knowledge sitting in their homes doing not much, feeling that they needed mm. to keep those brains alive like a, like an, a muscle that it is. Um, us just uh, with a desperate appetite for food, drink and, and hidden corners. Um, and all that information, all these people willing to share. I think the first thing we did, we sit down in a park in June when we were not allowed to go out. Don't tell, don't even ask me about toilets. And uh, <laughs> I was the, I, that was the worst. Um, and yeah. we asked all those tourist guides, very, very experienced tourist guides from extremely uh, uh, well-known travel companies in, in the world, what would you do if you have to create a product? 
what are the products that you've been itching to create that they have told you, no, no, you know what? Just keep doing cosmos. It sells well. <laughs> let's 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 do strap for Uponaven than back in the day. <laughs> Why you have to rush people? There's so much more to see. Why cannot they stay over in Bath? Why they have to come back on the same day? It's not all about Jane Austen, you know. It's so much more about Bath. Um, and they they literally said, oh, we got tons. We got tons. We got one of the things we want to do is we want to to tell people about about the Cockneys, the Londoners. The Londoners seems to have disappear under the layers of everything else. Let's talk about those Londoners. Um, um the made for lady ones. Let's talk about their food. Let's talk about the evolution of the city, how we came to be who we are. That was a story amazing out there. Of course, it got to yeah. be somebody that said, why don't, we, why don't we create something that is amazing for those that, that, that are so British and, and are inserted in the root of their own culture? Things like James Bond. James Bond is the essence of Britishness, <laughs> of, of who we are, the way he speaks, the way... If anybody wants to be British in Japan, he wants to be James Bond. So yeah. <laughs> so what? Let's 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 get subjects. Let's get a, a best ovens in town. That was an incredible product we came out with. Let's show people those pubs and tell them about the ale. Not just go there because you know what happened with the pub crawls. You always go to some good ones, but because you're walking, you end up with really bad ones. So if we put people in a bus and we get somebody that knows about ales and we go and we try to match those ales with gin and with pies and then we have an incredible gastronomical experience i suppose that's mm. called a pop crawl let's get culture into the food let's get people to visit um, um the national portrait gallery before he opens uh, and understand you know the suffragette got that one and a little bit of a, a gossip we do something called 500 years of royal gossip including the visit to trump the 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 uh, nightclub where, where Prince Andrew gave his interview. <laughs> and yeah. then uh, and uh, the florist, the perfumer, you know, and talk about... Um, so, but at the same, we just, we just had so many stories that we have to pick the one. But obviously, at the time, it was a little bit uh, um, naive to think that we could be sell tours in, in an um, environment where people cannot go out. And we literally were the people, we are the people of feel, touch, and be there. Virtual wasn't never be to be our, our route. We're going to survive this. We're going to write those things. We're going to launch our website. And, and literally very little we knew we got into lockdown again, August 2020. Um, and we said, let's sell these vouchers and, and hope that one day those people will be able to redeem them for experiences that, only existed in in a piece of paper that's it and uh we sold i don't know something like 580 in the first two weeks and we thought there is a market the brits wants to discover their own backyards they just need the right products we're going to tell them about the two shermans we're going to teach them cockney we're going to take them around brick lane we're going to call it exotic stand we're going to make it exotic um we're going to talk about bagel bakes um and uh, and a lot of those products couldn't see the light until probably May 21. Uh, to be honest, they existed and they were great, but uh, suppliers were not were not open. <laughs> and uh, nice. um, and that took us from one to the other. And I think every single element was done. We had four incredible things: the appetite of the Brits to. They knew they're going to have to stay home for a while. Might as well just yeah. discover, right? Um, we noticed that uh, w- we were not only attracting Londoners, we were asking, so where are you from, sir? Like the TV program. I just travel all the way from Birmingham to do this. Uh, um, I'm into music. We did Soho Music Experience. I'm, I'm, oh, this is a present for my husband. We came all the way from Glasgow to do this. And uh, um, and I, if you were not here, I said, oh, we we'll put a with Donna weekend in Mallorca, isn't it, darling? Or something like that. So they, they yeah. start loving it and more start coming. And we start doing a lot of that, 100% Brits. And where everybody else was were, were quiet, we were busy. The second element that was incredible is that there was a, a lot of uh, um, restaurants and bars that were desperate to attract more people. And we managed to get really good prices and make sure that those things wouldn't break the bank because... 
funny enough, people had that money there because they couldn't spend it only on Amazon or or on nothing. <laughs> it was yeah. um, it was Amazon or nothing. And then um, yeah. the third the third element was TikTok being able to use social media to tell people about those things. And uh, the fourth was that that kind of how we insert start inserting elements of tech. How can we, you know, kind of get people to to do things to make meet the maker? Um, we did we did a couple of times actually a tour to uh, the gym. So people and people were asking the 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 bar owners and the pub landlords and the restaurant owners how you survived during COVID. They wanted to just understand. So the the actual. Uh, showcasing the, the the venue itself became a second part of it as much as wanting to recognize a human being. What have you been? Let me tell you about me. I want to hear about you. Uh, I want to get out of my home. I wanted to do something, but I want to as well learn. And it was a year of memories. I don't know how many incredible stories I've heard of of, of survival and friendship and, uh, and uh, a lady just, you know, taking her grandpa in in walks around and so he me look at that that's Dover but you cannot go there, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah. and how and you know what we still we 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 launch we done a few times and now we formalize it more when we started to play with AI a year ago, uh, a tour of the the vineyard in Kent and the story remain how did you survive how do you manage to make wine during the during COVID. And uh, and save the vineyards, and uh, obviously the story I've now um, kind of fades. But still, one of the things people want to know is how, now they want to know how questions like uh, uh, you're going to find this hilarious, Matt. But we are about to launch a product: how to make condoms in the 17th century. Uh, apparently, they were made <laughs> they were made from the same sheep skin that haggis were made, and the Scottish were the first per- people that came out with. Proper nice condoms, and uh, they were they they were they made them, and women need them, and they had them on colors, and they were giving each other as a present. It was it was a it was a solid thing out there. Um, yeah. And um, now we want to kind of get into the instead of talking about Sarah Churchill, let's meet Sarah Churchill, let's have lunch with her and see what she has to say. And she's going to tell you, I wasn't lesbian, I was fluid. I just love people that love me. That's all. Um, we want to tell the story of Alan, Alan and Turing, the enigma. Was it a machine or was yeah. it a man? Um, so that's one of the things we're doing. We, we're taking the story, but we're telling the story of the people, as opposed to the story of the period or, or the, 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 you know, yes, the palace. She lives in the palace. Blending Palace is an incredible uh, a building, and you're going to visit it. And the architecture, like you were saying before, the hidden architecture and the hidden Romans and uh, you stepping. Yeah. That's an ex- another thing. Very, very, you know, you're talking here with the freak of the week, Matt. One, I am into Bond, but I am into Freemasons and Templars. 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 Give it to me anytime. The most incredible temple uh, um, grave is in the Old Gate square and if you pass all you're going to see is rubbish and cans of coke every time i go there i just clean it it's like guys there is a temple there's a barrier there so i just literally i had to I, it's it's literally on my list i know i don't know how many people will come but it's got to be done a templars book. yeah a templars book so people respect l- squares yeah, I love that, you know, you're making these experience immersive. You're, you're, you're getting people involved in the story. You're getting them to really, you know, rather than just be, being spoken to, actually be involved. And and part of me does connect this to your childhood of being moving about and being involved and getting out there and doing things and learning by yourself. And I think that's often how we learn best, you know, the, the sitting there and being spoken to. You, you might hear it, but you don't necessarily remember it. When you're involved in the story, that enables you to be able to remember it and recount it and and pass it on. And I can see you're bringing those old stories to people in that immersive way. Now, I, I think it's brilliant. And and people say, uh, but is it is it all deck and how you do it? it? Says it's just like cooking. Just get the right ingredients. Oh, Anna, you don't like walk tours? Mm. No, I don't have anything against walk tours. Anna, you don't like gorge tour? No, not really. Um, but 
as much as I like bacon and cheese, but I much rather prefer, uh, uh, um, you know, a burger that has it all, bacon, cheese, meat, jalapenos, salsa, uh, cheeses from everywhere, three different Mexican cheese, cheddar cheese, French cheese. Just try and mix it all and see what happens. Let's that flavor. So that's what we're trying to do. We've got four, four, I would say four or five very important uh, um, elements that cannot, you always going to found that repeat themselves in every imagined experience is uh, um, tell your story, tell the story of the character, uh, uh, eat their food, drink their drink, meet the mega, um, do thrilling activities, um, that's why we got speed boats. That's why we tell you about shaking non stir. Um, uh, and why we tell you Ian Fleming will have a pint of orange juice, scrambled eggs, and a black coffee. That he said it was the best uh, breakfast. That's why, um, um, you know, we, we show you the the exotic stand in London through, you, you go through six types of food in chronological order on how those cultures settle in London. And you start with baker bakes mm -hmm. with the with uh, fleeing of the of the Jewish arriving to the East End. I didn't realize that the Jews created the fish and ship. It, it's a Jewish thing. Um, Why? I didn't yes, know that. They, they, uh, uh, their financial situations were not the best, to say the least, when they have to uh, mm -hmm. settle. Uh, on that side of the city and um, they have to celebrate Sabbath and all they had was potatoes to fry and fish to, to get from the river. That's why oysters were, were the, the cheap protein. They were very popular. People would eat oysters and they had no spices so they would put flour and egg and fry it. That's all it was available and the bread mm. saw it was something that was really easy to eat and then they started selling it and the people, it was it was not just fish and chips, it was oysters and chips, it was uh, whatever you could fish, whatever you could get free from the river Thames. You put it, you put some uh, um, egg and flour and that's it, fry it and get on with it. So um, then we tell you about Africans and we tell you about fair trade with hot, with dark sugars. Then we tell you about the, the, the uh, Bangladeshis and how they come to be there. And, and you eat all their foods, and in that moment, you eat that portion of the story when they arrive and how they eat. And we end up in England because the cockneys were living there way before. And uh, at the English restaurant, where you actually have an oyster, an oyster, they came from Kent every morning, seven types of them. And I didn't realize England is the only country that had 13 types of oysters, no one else in the world. Um, and they are all sizes or beautiful, fresh with a glass of uh, Kent sparkling. And you're back in England with an hour, it's 20 minutes of uh, um, of uh, Cockney rhyming slang to 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 get. And the Brits, the Brits love it. We don't get any international customers in that tour. It's just the Brits. Let's eat my just food Brits, and understand yeah. my city. Yeah. And then they stay and they go to the pub and they end up Brick Lane and they probably come back and eat again. Um, so, yeah. I And um, do you know what? We, we love creating those experiences. And then we had clients complaining that we were not stopping to talk about the street art and there was not enough talk about the Credit Crunch and Banksy. And so we... we uh, and united the street art and, and now we call it taste of diversity <laughs> and you can have street yeah. and food and talk about um, um, Renzo and apparently Renzo was uh, on our Instagram he said guys I love what you're doing because we, we get this relax we eat we look at the art we carry on but we talk about their lives as well and uh, how they they have to do those things that disappear at 3 a.m. because the police are going to follow them and how the, the, the thing has become very corporate. Uh, big yeah. brands are now paying those artists to get those walls out there for two, three months. And people are engaging with those stories. And beautiful. Sometimes they spend a month making it and it only lasts for two months. So, yes, just, just telling those stories is incredible. And I think it's, um, it's a living process. Every time we create an experience, Six months later, we change it because something just changed. Yeah, uh, something, something's new and uh, it, it needs adapting. Correct. Absolutely. I, I just want to, I mean, I've loved hearing about w what you do. And uh, yeah, I'm re really sort of 
bought into the the idea of, okay. of the, the culture in London and, and where the other parts uh, in Kent, etc. And, and yeah, you know, being able to show those sides to people. And this is, you know, it was born out of COVID and obviously a little bit of your background. I, I normally move on now to if someone was starting a business, what advice would you give to them? What challenges have you come across that you maybe wish you'd considered right at the start? What would you say to someone? Do you know what I would always say? When I open the back door of my garden, uh, it's like a graveyard of of dead dead products, <laughs> uh, products that I created because it's going. That's the one I'm going to sell. Um, first, don't be afraid to have. You know, I, I as a marketeer, I very much believe on the. Do you know they they talk about the four P's: price, product, these and that. I believe in the seven P's. And the four main ones are definitely not the ones that have shown me um, the ropes, but the other three, which is purpose, people, and, you know, principles. Um, have a purpose. Yeah. Have a purpose. W ask yourself what you're doing, what you're doing. Second, people. Ask yourself who you are creating that for. Just visualize the smiles, the, the the laughter, the whatever it is that's going to generate in the other human being. And the 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 principles. Don't don't try to be one of the things that I'm very keen is that you know when people send you an email, uh, you'll be here back from our team. You'll be here back from me because we're only four or five people. We are a small company. Mm. We're not pretending to be big. We are a small amount of people trying to do something that we love together. Um, have identity. Um, make make sure that that uh, I believe in creating great things for a small group of people. Um, that's that's what we do. People more and more um, are moving into communities. We want to be. I believe in in passion in the passion economy. People will pay for the things they love because in 10 years' time, you're not going to say, oh, I remember when we went to that theme park, the the reservation came so fast and efficient. You are not. You remember what you eat, how you felt, uh, the smiles of mm -hmm. your kids. You probably hate theme parks, but you go there because you're, you didn't go there to enjoy the theme park. You go there to see them enjoying the theme park. Uh, remember yeah. that people love people that love people. Um, and if you run yeah. your business with purpose, principle, and people in mind, everything else will fall into place. Don't try to be anything big. Don't don't try to um, never never accept an opinion that you don't believe on it. They are experts out there of everything. They but they know you. You are you. You know what you want to do. Um, I don't know how many people told me, oh, you must be absolutely out of your mind. <laughs> who's, <laughs> who's, who, no Brit is going to pay that kind of money just to be James Bond. I said, well, let's, let's see that. Say mm. that, say that and take me back to something that you've been very, very, uh, um, um, mention it a couple of times is my background i remember people saying you sure you're gonna open a, a, a viewing platform in the top of a building that's not a british thing that's for america that will work in new york and uh, the first year was a million people wanted to go there and those people were experts yeah. and i'm sure they genuinely meant what they said i don't think is that uh, i just i just think that if you have an idea if you have um Another thing is, and I cannot deny it, it's the incredible amount of support and network out there. Um, I belong to a number of associations that are just there to support you, to give you the small tools that you need just to ask a question. And, and uh, the Entrepreneurs Collective was very, very good. Uh, you ask anything and they will say, don't let them do that. Go find the solicitor. Don't pay that. Don't pay more than that. And... Uh, Surround yourself the people that, that that are in the same situation or the same path as you are. Don't be afraid to just, you know, get your your, your best gear and go to the bank and ask for money. Uh, um, 
And do you know what? One of the things that COVID brought was people working from home, being happy. Mm. Um, we don't have, we have an office, of course, but nobody goes there. Everybody works from home. We are the most creative team. Everybody have room to be themselves. Um, they just, I don't literally give jobs to people. Oh, I'm recruiting a position. I just engage somebody and I would like to do, I had a conversation yesterday with a, a gentleman that is expert on, on spying. He says, Anna, he does, he's from a group called Spybury, which I'm a member of course, I've been spying. <laughs> yeah. If you're not a librarian, you're not part of me, me group. And then uh -huh. says, Anna, we need to start promoting small publishers because everybody reads John Le Carré. We need to tell people mm -hmm. that there are another spy books out there as you do, right? And then, um, it's, it's a community thing. Don't don't be, just reach to those communities. Make sure they know you are there. And uh, do you know what? Don't be afraid to put your message out there. There is social media, social people. Be social with media. I always said as well. Don't be afraid to write yeah. to journalists and tell him I, I would. I want to tell my story. What well, I was going to say? No. I say be in social media and be social with media. Uh, Tell your story. Be be the ambassador of your brand. If you have purpose, people, and principles, I think it's all makeable. And if anybody Anna, that is get time from me, just call me. Anna, that is brilliant. Thank you so much for telling me your story today. And uh, you've certainly got me engaged in it. And I hope everyone listening has too. I wish you all the best of luck in, in the future. And I'm, I'm excited to see the, you know, what happens and additional products uh, and places I'm mad, and all that mad. you have. I'm at this excited point, I just don't have to come to one of our experiences. It's a must. I, yeah, Let me know. Have, I'm have definitely a check going of, to. Have a check of the website and the new ones and uh, and please bring and bring the kids, please. I will. I will. Thank you so much, Anna. It's been an absolute pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry for all the tralala. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Balance Ambition Podcast. I genuinely hope the stories inspire you as much as they inspire me. If you found value in today's conversation, please share it with a friend. And remember, by subscribing, you won't miss an episode and it would truly mean the world to me. Stay balanced and I'll see you next time.